Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent to adjust the House for five minutes and revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. As the ranking member of the Committee on Science, Space, and Technology, I feel compelled to talk to you today about the disastrous effects of the Ryan budget and that it would have on our country's research and development enterprise and consequently the disastrous effect this budget would have on America's future competitiveness. As others have pointed out, the Republican budget cuts non-defense discretionary spending by $1.3 trillion below the baseline 2014 spending level adjusted for inflation. These are massive cuts on top of a budget that has already had large reductions in recent years. The effects of research and development would be dramatic. The American Association for the Advancement of Science estimates that the Ryan budget would cut civilian research and development by $92 billion from the current baseline and $112 billion below the President's budget request. These are striking reductions. Please keep in mind here that the National Science Foundation's total annual budget is just over $7 billion. So the Republican budget cuts more research and development funding every year than the entire annual budget of the National Science Foundation. This really is insanity. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle have truly divorced themselves from reality if they think these cuts to research and development won't cripple our country for decades to come. Let's talk about the Republicans, uh, about what the Republicans want to cut. It is estimated that technological innovation has led to the majority of America's economic growth since World War II. Much of this innovation has been funded by the federal government. Think back to the first grants that NASA gave Robert Noyce's upstart company in the 60s. Of course, he went on to be the founder of Intel, the largest computer chip maker in the world. Or think of the NSF research grant that led to the creation of Google. The very internet itself was initially funded as a research project by the Department of Defense and rolled out by the National Science Foundation. You can look at virtually every aspect of our high-tech industry and the economy and find a connection to federal research and development funding. To make dramatic cuts and drastic cuts to the R&D funding in the name of de deficit reduction is truly short-sighted. My friend and former CEO of Lockheed Martin, Dr. Norma Augustine, frequently gives the following analogy. When an airplane is overloaded and too heavy to fly, you don't cut weight by chopping the, off the engines. I think that's a great analogy because that's exactly what this budget does. It cuts off the engine of the American innovation. It would be bad enough if these deep cuts only affected research and development. But the Ryan budget will also painfully cut education funding. Index for inflation, that budget would cut hundreds of billions of dollars from pre-college and college education programs. Let's put these education cuts in context. In the last international student assessment, U.S. students ranked 26th in mathematics and 21st in science. We are falling behind our economic competitors in STEM education. The Republican solution to this problem is to throw the towel in. These educational cuts sell our children out, plain and simple. Taken together, the cuts to research and education in this Ryan budget paint a dark picture of America's future. It's a picture where America no longer leads the world in innovation. It's a picture where our children are not prepared for the rigors of a competitive 21st century global marketplace. It's a picture of America in decline. I reject this future. I call upon my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to reject the Ryan Republican budget that sells America short and instead show support for robust education and research funding and a strong American future. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back.